الهنية وهاب يا غني اللهم إن زك العلم لدني ومشرب السوف ينهني وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما فقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهما النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك استودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا بالنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاد الأمور أمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمور كلها يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضى من لساني يفقه قولي وسد لساني وهد قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كما فتوح العارف والفقه في الدين مع كما الإخذ سرق اليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخير الدارين وعلم الأول والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الفاتحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله بس الله سبحانه وتعالى for giving us the health and ability and the توفيق إن شاء الله to continue our lessons مهما كان يعني no matter what no matter regardless of situation إن شاء الله that we continue on استقامة on our lessons الحمد لله and we بس الله سبحانه وتعالى for for this beautiful religion this perfect way of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right by which we, by uh, who has taught us, how do we get to our Creator subhanahu wa taala, get close to our Creator, and how do we worship Him as how, uh, in in the best in the best way we are able to as human beings. Alhamdulillah, um, we are okay. Actually, we are just we're not here at all. Um, let me just write tapi dawai. Allahumma salli ala sallam Muhammad. Okay, I'm just gonna use this part here. Okay, I think you just type out notes from now on. It's easier so that it's not lost. Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, we actually have finished on the session of Qadha, right? The Qadha of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Qadr, right? Because right now we are in the fourth hurdle, right? So we have taken the part on sustenance, right? On uh, on risk. So the fourth hurdle is a hurdle that is uh, basically the hurdle of distractions. Now it's a hurdle of distractions, like this, and, and, and the definition of distraction is what we are not going to be questioned about on a day of judgment. Right, basically, um, when it comes to the day on, on the day of judgment, right, and what we're not going to be questioned about on the day of judgment is basically what does not concern us. Right, so uh, what concerns us in this dunya is is everything that has to do with our questioning, our hisab, uh, our standing before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on the day of judgment. Right, so and that makes makes things very clear to us with regards to these four things Imam Ghazali has um, has 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 uh, highlighted for us. Right, uh, as to which, how do we understand uh, what is on us and what is not on us? Right, just basically on on the on the scale of what will you be questioned about or what you will you, will you be held responsible for on the day of judgment? Right, so for example, like how much wealth when it comes to the first the first uh, distraction, right, and we have taken it. You know, and mashallah, we've been, been on this for quite some time, right? Uh, but 
Alhamdulillah, you know, just at the, I, I hope that for those of you who have been uh, following the lessons, right, that every time we come to this, uh, uh, we, we come to the lesson, right, that each each lesson, you know, it becomes clearer and clearer what Imam Ghazali is uh, laying out for us. Alhamdulillah. And right, before we we continue, just uh, take baraka, inshallah, right from the book Min Hajj Al-Abidin, in the Rabbil Alamin. Nin Imam al Mujadil Hujjat al Islam al Muslimin Zain Din Abi Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad al Ghazali al Tusi al Tabarani al Shafi Ain Rayallah wa Anhu wa Nafa'an Allah wa Bihi wa Bi'an Mif Darain. From the book The Path of the Worshipful Servant to the Gardens of the Lord of the Worlds by the Great Imam, the Renewer of His Time and of, and, of, and of all times thereafter, the proof of the religion and of the Muslims, the beauty of this religion, the father of Hamid. Uh, Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad Al Ghazali Al Tusi Al Tabarani of the Shafi Al Mazhab. May Allah be pleased with him, and may Allah um, benefit us by him and by his knowledge in both abodes. Alhamdulillah. Right. So uh, just to mention, so the, as as we each and every time you come into the lesson, right, that uh, it becomes clear and clearer right, how Imam Ghazali has um, drawn, you know, has, has has given us the principles or basically the. Um, and the principles by which you can distinguish, you know, what is on us and what is not on us right, in this dunya. This entire hurdle of distraction is about, is about this, right? What is on you and what is on, not on you. And many human beings tend to fall into the trap right, of shaitan right, by making them uh, distracted right, by things that is not on them. Right, you will not be questioned about these things on a day of judgment. Right, but the human being wastes, you know, and I will say waste, right? Because what whatever does not is not for you on a day of judgment is a waste of time. Right? Either it's a waste of time or it is a is a ter is a badly used. It is in fact uh, you will say it is it is a um, it's a musiba right, on you if you use it to be against you on a day of judgment. Right? So basically, time is this is why Imam Ghazali in in Bidat uh, Hidayah and the beginning of guidance he begins by saying that time it is the capital of the believer. Right? It is your capital. Right? You invest it, right? and 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 basically investments can benefit. Right? It can bring destruction when you go bankrupt right? in your, because of your investment, or it can be a waste. It's a waste. There's nothing there. No benefit, no um, uh, no harm from it. But that again, you will say that it's a harm. Waste, wasting something is a harm in itself right? because you could have benefited from that amount. Right? So he says that you know every day, 24 hours you have is 24 precious like, like dirham. You know, in a sense, it's given to you right? and that is your investment. Right, so this entire dunya, which is why this this fourth hurdle came about, because necessarily as you see how Imam Ghazali uh, uh, brings a discussion right, of you know the Minhaj Abidin right, for people to understand what why are we here in the first place, you know, and mashallah we, we have you know Subhanallah like we have a lot in our zaman right now that that, that drags us or holds us down in the fourth hurdle. Right, which is why people are between the first four hurdles, right? Unable to go past the first four hurdles, right? Because you know, either not enough knowledge, the first hurdle knowledge, um, uh, be, uh, unable to move on after committing a sin, right? The second hurdle, the second hurdle of Taubat, right? So unable to to basically do, do, not not knowing right, how to function with the self, knowing the 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 flaws of the self. You know, and Islam teaches us how do you handle your flaws and how do you how do you accept right, that you are a human being right? and the thing that Allah that Allah loves right, about His servants is that they keep turning to Him in repentance. Subhanahu wa taala. Right? So to, to, to have that you know in our in our minds, a lot of human beings we are we are unfo we're more. Subhanallah, Allah is so merciful and right? we are the ones who are unmerciful right? and we are unforgiving. Right, subhanallah, whether it's on ourselves or other people, we are unforgiving, and right, so we tend to, you know, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's unhealthy, right, to be, to be, to be, to, to so that it, it does not allow you to move on right, in life and to get on with it. You're, you're, you're on your way to your grave. Khalas, right, stop wasting time on things, you know, of the past or things on that that okay, yeah, like things have happened, and then you have taubat, you learn your your mistakes, you learn what you're supposed to do, move on. Khalas, right, you're on your way to your grave. Right, back up, back up. Right, basically, you're on this travel later. Yes, there's no stopping. Right, so keep look, always looking back at signs that passed you by. Right, that's not stop the travel later from moving. <laughs> you're still moving. Right, and the, and the end comes suddenly. And then comes with the third hurdle. The third hurdle is basically brings you to the whole point of your existence, right, which is worship. Right, and the things that they will try and drag you and stop you from worshiping. Right, and that is you know uh, uh, things that try and stop you. The fourth hurdle is things that distract you from worshiping. You think you are worshiping, but you are not worshiping, right, because you are being distracted by these things. 
Right, so and these things they're distractions because as mentioned from the beginning of this lesson, you are not questioned about these things on the day of judgment. Kalas. Right, so when it comes to rezeki, right, you're not questioned on how much rezeki you earned in this world. You're questioned on what you do with the rezeki. And it's in the hadith, it's a hadith whereby Rasulullah Sallam said, When on a day of judgment, that a human being will be asked about his rezeki from where he gained it and where he got it and where did it go to. Right? So two things halal or haram sources. And then what do you do with it? Do you waste it? Right? Did you uh, use it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did a person use it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because there are those that lost in the Quran, there are those who would uh, spend in the way against the Prophet. Right? They use the rizq that Allah gave them to fight the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and to, to, fight Allah, to, to fight the Muslims. And we know of, of people who spend all kinds of money right, in the way against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So of course that one will be that, you know, on, on a destruction right, for them. Then many people are just basically in this dunya wasting their money away and right, doing all kinds of things with their rizq. Right? These things are questioned on a day of judgment. You know, everything that you put in your mouth, everything that you that, that you spend, these are all things that are, this, that are, that are questioned right, on a day of judgment. Which is why, you know, we have the, we have the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, whereby uh, where once, you know, he slaughtered an animal right, and he gave away all the meat except the, uh, except the hit. Right? And Sayyidina Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, we have, uh, you know, we, we have nothing except the head. And then he said, rather, we have everything except the head. <laughs> everything that you give out, that's for you. And what you hold back for yourself, that's not for you. Right? Unless you use it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then it becomes for you. And alhamdulillah. Right? So, uh, so, so you see, when it comes to rizki, right, you're not questioned on how much you get. Right? You're questioned on where it's from and where it goes. That's it. Right, so it, uh, that's when it comes to rizki, and when it comes to rizki, right? Because Imam Ghazali has and he made his, his his point very clear, right? When it comes to rizki, rizki is fixed from before you were born. How much you have in this dunya, you will consume, right? Whether you like it or not, you will consume, right? But what will be what you'll be questioned about will be you know um, uh, uh, not being responsible, right? Or being uh, being a cheat. Or being, or being uh, honest, you know, whatever it is, when it comes to your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how we draw the line. Right? What is questioned and what is not questioned, that's what is a distraction and what is not a distraction. And what, so, so and, or any questions right, uh, that anyone can pose to a person about rizki, about fears, about worries, about qada, you know, about um, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, about, about, about uh, yeah, we're going to about about and about, about, about qadha, right? all of these things. Right? It is and about musibah. Last one is musibah and about calamities. Right? All of these things. No matter what the question, there is one answer. Will you be questioned about this or not? Right. So if you will not be questioned about it, then that's it. Let it go. <laughs> it's not a question on the of judgment. So it shouldn't be a concern. Right in this dunya. So it's not a question on you in the day of judgment, right? But if it's a question on you, then it becomes then it, then it should be a concern for you in this dunya. So he, we went through worries, right? People who worry, what if this happened and what if that happened and what if what happened? You know, you know. So so where is it that we are that, that we have to be held to account? So you think about it, right? Where is the what? What are the questions on the day of judgment? So if let's like, say for example, when it comes to raising your children, right? Tarbiya, right? you want to teach people. Right, so so uh, what are you questioned about on the uh, judgment? That is your responsibility. That's your concern. Right, so you know, like right, like whether or not um, you teach them the prayer, and whether or not you teach them the Quran, you teach them the fardu ain. Right, that is what you are. You will be questioned about. But in the future, however they are, however they will be, and we, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, you know, for afia, right, for, for for goodness in this world and the next world. Right? But however they be in the future, that is out of your control. Right, because that is, you know, so you can't say that you can't worry. What if she turns out this way, or what if he turns out like this, or what if, what if, what if? You, it's not your control. It is part of the decree. Right? It's, it's so it's tough wheel. Right, that is basically entrusting the matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, because you, we're not even promised life <laughs> till till people grow old. Right, you, you could die at any at any moment. Right, so about what you will be questioned will be what the amount of effort you put in uh, with this uh, with with this matter. Right, the same thing about you know, any form of any form of worries or fears. 
right? So it, it it all of you know the lengths that you have taken, right? But then thereafter, whatever happens is whatever Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decreed, and we we entrust our matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are in the part of Qadha. We have finished Qadha. In fact, I think. We're almost finished. Almost finished qada. Um, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Where, you know, what are your question when it comes to Allah's decree? Now, you're not questioned about anything when it comes to Allah's decree. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But you'll be questioned on your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? There was once a man that came up to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. I think the story is inside here somewhere. Right? Um, there was a man who was caught stealing. In the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And so they were caught. Uh, he, he was caught. And he said Sayyidina Umar. And the wrong, <laughs> thing, like, like, wrong person to, talk, to, to try and argue with. Uh, this, this man was another one. <laughs> I mean of all people you try and argue with. Okay Sayyidina Umar. Uh, in asking for it. Uh, <laughs> Inshallah. Right, so this man. I mean it, sometimes you wonder. Eh, why? Why? Right, so why anyway, did he argue? He was caught stealing. Da, da, caught stealing. Man. And then he has to be, to be cut off. Uh, so he argued Sayyidina Umar He said that, Oh it is a decree Of Allah That I stole right? It is his decree That I stole And then he said And Sayyidina Umar And then, and then, and then he said to, to, to Sayyidina Umar Are you trying to challenge The decree of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And Sayyidina Umar said Well It is a decree of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala That you will be caught And your hand will be cut <laughs> Right so, so Allah's decree are you challenging that? <laughs> Subhanallah. But and then and he says and then and then Sayyidina Umar said, I'm not going against the decree. Rather, you we are both on a decree, but you went against the Sharia. Sharia is clear. I'm going with the Sharia. You are going against the Sharia. The decree nobody can fight. Right? But Sharia, right, you are told what is right and what is wrong, right? And you are given the choice of what is right and what is wrong. Of course, everything is in the absolute perfect knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is where our intellect stops. Right? Which is why some people they, they, they can't they can't piece this together. Right? Saying that you know everything we, we are given a choice, right? Yet everything is decreed, right? So how do I put it together? You can't because your knowledge is not absolute. Right, you don't, you don't, you don't see things in a, a beyond the frame of time that you're in. Right, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not in time. Right, Allah's knowledge is perfect and 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 com and, and, and completely. Uh, you know, it, it, it covers everything. You know, absolute perfection, Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so it's why a human being will come to a point whereby you can't you can't go past that. Right, you believe in a decree. Right, because we believe in the perfection of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His knowledge. Right, we believe in choice, and right, because we believe in. The, uh, uh, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We believe in the, in the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Punish a person if it was not their choice And in fact in Islam In, uh, in the last few ayats of Surah Baqarah In, Ali, in, in Surah in, in Amal al-Rasul right, That if somebody was forced on something You are not held to account And that is dalil already right? So if you are forced right, to eat in the day of Ramadan uh, Otherwise it's your life right? They will kill you Right, then you're allowed to eat. Will you be held account for that? No, because you're forced. Right. So in Islam, right, whatever you is forgotten, it means when you forgot and you committed a sin, that like you forgot to pray, for example, or whatever is forced onto you, if you're forced to commit a sin, it's not counted in Islam. So it's only whatever you do, you do willfully. Right, then it is counted. From there we understand the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so you can't say, a person can't say, oh, you know, I went there and I took the, uh, the, the, the gold and I was forced to steal. Right, unless someone put a gun to your head and forces you to steal. <laughs> right, and that is forced. And that is not called stealing. That is basically called someone's forcing you. Right, but if you went there, you can't say that, oh no, I was forced by my hand. My hand forced me <laughs> to steal something. Right, I mean, any human being will say, yeah, <laughs> and now I'm forced to hit you <laughs> by my hand. <laughs> I mean, subhanallah. Right, these are the, the, the arguments that people who don't understand the qadr and the qadr, um, Allah <laughs> Sayyidina Muhammad right, uh, who don't understand the qadr and the qadr, the entire issue. Right, and, they want, and, and you see, you, you ne they never, that whenever they argue about the qadr and the qadr, they will argue about sin. You know, those who argue about Qadr and Qadr say, Oh, I am, I was, you know, it's a decree that I am born. Like someone might say, Oh, it's a decree, I am born a sinner like this. So, what to do, right? I'm born this way. And like why can't you go the other and say, Oh, it's a decree that I'm born a wali, mashallah. You know, and go and be like a wali. Right? And then continue continue with your ibadah and your istighfar and your non stop slawar and your non stop, uh, you know, uh, 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 good akhlaq and so on. Right? I mean, why people, whenever you hear the argument of decree, it's always, Oh, it's a decree. It's, whenever it comes to ma'asiyat, blame the decree. <laughs> and then when your lack of thought, you know, why can't you just you know say that 
you know, mashallah, you know, like, like use it in a way whereby, you know, how do you know your decree is that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to pray, you know, a, a thousand raka'ans in a night, right? I mean, of some of the, of the ulama, you know, mashallah, and they, mashallah, they understand this, that when they pray that amount, they correctly ascribe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has allowed for me to do this. Allah has written for us to sit down and learn this book. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Right, that is the correct, um, that's the correct approach when it comes to understanding the decree. Right, so, where, so, what, so basically the, the, the line, right, where do you draw the line of what is, what, of what is a distraction and what is, uh, is going to be a question on the day of judgment, right? Basically, what you will be held accountable for. That's it, right? So, uh, as as we've been going through in the past few weeks, right? Like your fam, the family you are born into, you will not be questioned about it. Uh, but how you respond, how do you interact with your family, you will be questioned about that. Right? That is it's clear. Right? There's a decree. So, the decree is the family you are born into. The decree is the gender you are born into. The country you are born into. The person that you marry. Right? The children that you are given. The uh, the zaman that you are placed in all of these things, all of these things is you just place there. You just place there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right, everything that has come to pass is a decree. Everything in your life is the decree that has come to pass. Is this? When to draw? To draw here. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, everything that has. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> right. The, everything that has come to pass is the, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot run from a decree. You can't run from a decree. Right? But your you know your response to the decree, right, that is what is a uh, question. Right? So whether or not I see it, like you see, um very clear example, as Allah gives in the end of Surah Tahrim. Right? Uh, you have uh, the wife of Firaun. Her it's her decree that she's uh, gonna be the wife of Firaun. But the, the decree also ends in this dunya. <laughs> right, it's, therefore, it's in the decree that she will be the wife of Rasul Sam in the next world. Right, it's a decree that she will find Nabi Musa by the, by the river. Right, the wife of Firaun, Asia. Right, it's a decree that she will argue for the case of Nabi Musa to be kept in the palace. Right, she, it's a decree that she will believe in Nabi Musa. Right, but all the while, she is being rewarded for what she's doing you know, uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so your, your spouse is your decree. Right, your companions are your decree. Your children are your decree. Everything in your life is, a, is decree. Everything. You can't say anything about, about you know. So if they say someone misses the, the prayer, it is a decree. Right, but you can't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so there's no blame on Allah. Right, when it comes to the decree, right, but if you was you were negligent about it, right, then the blame is on you and the sin is on you. Right, as as how we see good deeds, right, that if Allah allows for a person, and this is is called tawfiq, that Allah places the ability, right, and the you you will say the realization in a person to get their life together and and start working for the akhirah, that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala min fadlihi. By his, by, by, his, by his bounty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's given this to you. So that's how we don't ascribe it to ourselves. Right? But Allah, by his greatness and his generosity, he will reward us for it. And right? for doing this. But he is the one who gives us the health. He is the one who gives us the wealth. He is the one who woke us up. He is the one who placed us on the path. He is the one, inshallah, on the path. He is the one who made us, you know, uh, get up and pay a few rakahs. He is the one who, you know, who put it in our head. You know, uh, you know, you're going to regret this if you don't, if you don't wake up right now. <laughs> I mean, he's the one who put all these things, mashallah, for us. You know, and then he's the one who's also, who, who will also, uh, who will also reward us in the hereafter. You know, mashallah. So when it comes to ibadah. Right, ibadah, right, worry about where is your ibadah. And right, what is not and not gonna be a concern on the day of judgment, don't worry yourself about it. Right, so as as what we have mentioned in the entire past few lessons, uh, you know, many lessons so far. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Um so we are actually so we finished that part actually. Mm. Right? Um where are we? Eh? In our recitation. I lost my sticker, so I don't really know where I am. Been really weeks since I got my sticker back. Who took my sticker? No? We finished the decree, yes. Yeah, finish the decree. That's right. We're already in the third uh, the fourth form is the Musiba. The Musiba, the calamity, right? Um, let me see. We are on the English. So we're on part of calamity. So calamity is part of a decree as well. As as I mentioned, all four are interlinked. 
right? But just that Imam Ghazali separated them so that we because people seem to to see these four things as different things, but they're all one and the same. Whatever is given to you, <laughs> right? And then so basically, it's just thrown to you, and you and and see how well you do. That's it. Right, see how well you do, right? So it um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, we are on the side uh, on the ayat of uh, the fourth hindrance, adversities. Eh, al-arid. How come my sticker is somewhere else? Okay lah. Okay, al-arid for the fourth hindrance. Um, at uh adversities and misfortunes. Shada'id, shada'id, shada'id wa masaib ra musibah. Okay, so he says here we are on page hundred and seventy for those who have the black book. I think the other book is on page 129. Okay, on the in the white book. <laughs> the white book, the black book. Right, there are several different prints for this. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, now we have covered. Fa'in qulta faradhi. It's a finish already. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, tamam here. Right, ashada'id wal masa'ib. Right, so he says here. There is only one protection from adversities and misfortunes, and that is a sabr, right? That is patience, tamam? Right, and then he will go into a lang, a, a quite a lengthy discussion lah on patience, right? Because the first one, when you speak about risk, that was the solution that he gave, tawakkul. Second one, when you when you speak about worries and fears, he gave taf, uh, tafwil, right? Tafwil meaning entrusting the matter to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Third one. About a decree, rida, like a rida with a decree of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fourth one, musibah, right? So masaib wa shada'it, difficulty in life and musibah. And this, mashallah, I mean, subhanallah, I was just thinking that a few a few days ago, you know that um, you know about the entire issue, you know, in in in, in, our, in our zaman when people speak a lot about trauma and they speak a lot about um you know a lot a lot about broken hearts you know and, and, and musiba right basically musiba that afflicts every human being every human being have their scars every human being have their um pain I mean, they have their, the, the pain the, the hurts and the pain that has happened to them in life it's called dunya for a reason right? it's dunya right basically it's dunya right so it you know it um you know, and this has become like a big topic in our zaman, right? Because uh, so much focus on it, and and much just a few days ago, I was just, somebody was asking me about it. You know, about like like how do we handle all this? You know, these flashbacks. And I was one of during the one of the sessions on 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 my safe space. Somebody was asking about all these flashbacks and all these you know uh, calamities that have happened to me in my life. And right? what do I do about these things? Right? Do I keep you know going back to it? Do I keep uh, revisiting it? Right? How do I, re you know, what, what do I do? Right? And here is the answer, right here. A sabr. Right? A sabr. Right? So sabr, uh, and we're going to go through the different uh, levels of sabr. Imam Ghazali tells us it's a distraction. And that's how I was just thinking yesterday when someone asked me about it again. Right? About all these scars of the heart and all these wounds and whatsoever. What are they? They are distractions. They are actually distractions. The more you focus on them, the more you you are going to be distracted from the real work. What's the real work? Akhirat. You're supposed to be working on your akhirat. You're supposed to be doing your ibadah. You're supposed to be preparing for your grave. You're know, supposed to be building your grave. You know, your, your, your abode in the barzakh. Right? But you're so distracted by all this musibah that's happening around you right? and that you just, you know, remain stagnant. Some people, you know, days on end, weeks on end, months on end, years on end. Right? Stagnant where they are. You're not, being stagnant is not going to stop the grave from coming, to, from, from you going to the grave. Right? So focus. Focus on this. Focus on why you're here. This musibah, they happen, Yes. Islam does not uh, deny the pain that comes with musibah. It's part of dunya. It's part of dunya. Right? Which is why the, the, the famous, I mean, there was a statement that I, that I read when I was very young until I still remember the same statement. Right? Which is, uh, which, is, which, is, which is, pain is inevitable. Misery is a choice. That's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. Right? Pain happens to everybody. You're, you're, not, you're not human if you don't feel pain. <laughs> you're not human. And so Rasulullah SAW himself, with the death of his son, the death of his, um, his mother, right? the death of his wife, the death of his sahaba, his, you know, his, his companions who passed away in war in front of him. 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was known to cry, and he will weep. And when he see that this 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 this, this um this uh, beloved people to him uh, in his life, they are they are passing away in front of him. Of course, there's pain, there's pain of loss. Uh, there is pain of uh, missing uh, someone's in Rasulullah you know, years of the death of Khadija and Alhamdulillah for all these narrations uh, so that we know it's okay and we know that it's normal uh, so when you remember someone beloved to you who has gone on uh, and you begin to weep it does not show lack of rida it shows human you're just human that's what you are you're not an angel <laughs> right and, you know maybe some of us are Allah alam, right? but but um, I mean most of us we're not we're human beings you know mashallah and in fact to have these feelings is higher right, than to be unaffected by things because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had these feelings and he's the best of human beings higher than the angels sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so to be able to have compassion to be able to uh, feel for others right to be able to uh, grieve Right, because of something natural, right, like a loss, right, grief over, over things, it's a things that have been taught to us by our Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his hal or his state of abudiya, his state of of being a slave to Allah subhanahu wa taala, is higher than the angels, right. So you want to say angelic, also, uh, you know, the prophetic <laughs> is higher than the angelic, right? to be to, to to be close. Is to how the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You can't be prophetic, you know, mashallah. Right, but you can we can try to be a follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. So when it comes to these misfortunes, the first thing that we have to lay out is that misfortunes happen to all human beings. Right. If misfortunes were to play the role of paralyzing people, you know, hindering them, distracting them. Stopping them from doing what they are placed on this earth to do, right? Then every human being will just be quite useless <laughs> in this dunya, uh, unable to move on. Right? So you know, the more a person were to say, you know, focus on your musiba, right? Focus on the pain. Focus on is that focus on the distraction? No, it has happened. Khalas. Maybe lessons from it. Okay, learn lessons. Learn lessons, and then that is part of your ibadah. Your ibadah is that if there were mistakes that you had made, taubat from it. Second hurdle, right? Taubat from it. How do you know if there were mistakes? First hurdle, knowledge. <laughs> it tells you already where were the mistakes. Right? You learn from the first hurdle. Then you saw, okay, there were there was some ma'asad going on, something that I did wrong. Right? Okay, that and because of this this uh, ma'asad all that, taubat. If there were musibah that happened and it couldn't be have been helped because of the decree it has been decreed already onto you, right? So then, then accept it as part of the musibah of this life. Everybody goes through musibah. Is not is in you know, Subhanallah. There is no human being who is currently going through a new musibah. Every musibah that you are possibly anybody could be going through right now has happened to a person sometime before. And there are human beings who have gone through worse musibah. Right, you think that thing to yourself. Whatever you're going through, it can get worse. <laughs> it can actually get worse. <laughs> right, right, and whatever you're going through is not unique to you. It is not unique to you. Right, people have lost parents from before. Yeah, they have. People have lost children from before. Yeah, they have. Right, people have been uh, assaulted from before. Yes, they have. People have been uh, broken and been and been run down from before. Yes, they have. Many people. That's what dunya is about. Just accept it that you're not unique. Right, everybody can. I don't think you're the only one who is who is uh, suffering. Everybody has their suffering, but then there are those who take the suffering and then they understand that this is part of the test of life. Like, and so do you use this to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? or will it distract you from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? If your musibah has not increased you in your salawat, in your istighfar. Right, in your prayers, in being a better person, in your akhlaq, right, in your service of others. If it's not increasing in your ibadah, then that's a musibah. And right, that's a musibah in the akhirah. And right, that a person is not taking whatever's coming their way to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a real and so why the scholars they will say that a musibah is not a true musibah unless it's a musibah and a calamity is not a true calamity unless it's a calamity to your iman. Because that is a, an everlasting calamity. If the calamity is to your iman, everlasting. Right? Unless you taubat lah. If the calamity is to something in this dunya, then it's only for the for the for the, for the, for the time of this dunya. And the time of this dunya is not long. And when you contemplate on that, then you think to yourself, why am I still stuck here? Like, get up, move on. 
right just flip the switch and move i right? don't you know like don't dwell on things the more you dwell it does not it does not do anything right you don't don't dwell on it continue moving on right from it i know there are people who say that you know if you just ignore it it's just going to stay there no allah takes it away it's true allah takes it away right the more you dwell on it the more you give life to it right the more you give pain to it right the more you i know it's i know it's completely contradicting a lot of things being said by psychology in our time i know it, it is right? and your counseling or psychology or whatever they will, they will try to bring it out and right? uh, they will say that oh it's all buried inside you know what you know what our 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 teacher say that the burial is a mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're unable to to function if it's all brought out right? it means you're reliving the the trauma over and over and over and over and over again no distract yourself busy yourself with worship and and uh and 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 uh, voluntary works right and service and whatever it is do what is good i right? earn something for yourself in the, in the hereafter i right? or do for for others you know work i right? do something and, and and earn for your for your grave and for your hereafter be practical right but i would our zaman and i apologize to anybody here who's like a psychology major or whatever or psychologist here right but but you know what a lot of things in our modern day goes against this it actually goes against it and in, in fact if you look into it it does not solve the problem it actually just you know makes people dwell in it they dwell right? and then they're stuck there then they're in circles right they just they, they, they dig a deeper and deeper and deeper hole they're going to keep they keep focusing on the hole and keep digging in the hole of course it, got, it goes all the way in and it, and it creates a, a major scar right? you know, like you know like when you have like a scab right if you keep digging in becomes a scar you ignore it the body will naturally heal itself and the body is able to naturally heal itself by the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? and then you please you know uh, uh i mean you you see uh, from 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 the salawat and from the quran right? from doing good acts from good doing good deeds allah heals subhanahu wa ta'ala in his power subhanahu wa ta'ala don't dwell dwelling makes it worse right but moving on and doing what you are created to do that's where it helps you that's why it's sabr and he tells us about sabr i just bear with it and carry on i bear with what what it is carry on and the, 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 this is what you see mashallah and, and i i strongly believe is one of the uh, hikmah of you know in islam that that uh, to bury the deceased asap right? as soon as possible bury because for as long as the deceased is there you know how you, you know if someone in, in the house passes away Right, so before they pass away, that there's like you know you keep going to the house and they're not well, they're sick. You keep visiting, visiting, visiting. You're doing khidmat to them, you're helping them and everything, right? And then when they pass away, I right, come to jenazah and all that. I right, people come, you know, and then they recite. And then once it's the person is buried, the healing begins. Right? Do you see that? The moment it, the the person is buried, right? They begin. It's out of sight. That person that that the, the, the loved one is out of sight. Right, and and soon the heart begins to detach right to so the initial pain you know of 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 being severe right from the from the, from the beloved right so the, the, the parents you know or a child you know or a spouse or a friend whatever it is the initial you know uh, being severe right you know, suddenly because of death you know suddenly being, being severe there is an initial very like heart wrenching uh, pain that comes but the moment the the last you know the, the person is removed from sight and right, the jenazah is removed from sight and jenazah is buried the heart begins to uh the heart begins to move on there is there is a there is a uh hikmah of that and because can you imagine if for as long as the person is in front of you you can't move on like if you keep the jenazah there for three days four days five days like you, you're just like stagnant can't do anything because the the, the 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 deceased person is in front of you you that like you can't you can't do anything until it's removed from sight as a hikmah in islam you know of course you know of course uh, on the physical side is to to not have the smell and the the rotting and whatsoever of the of the corpse right, of the janaza right but you know mashallah the moment the person is buried out of sight right and then the human being begins to accept the fact of the matter of what you know the, the fact what has happened right, the person has has passed Right, and they begin to accept it and then they begin to move on right and then maybe they might they they, they, they were and it's human only to replay uh, memories right, and then to remember wasiat 
uh, advice from the person and then and then and then eventually because you know if, especially if the person is, is a good person you know, a righteous person that you want to get to where that person is so you begin to get your your life together and then to 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 to, to be righteous right, in your actions and then inshallah in the day of judgment be reunited by whomsoever that, uh, that, that 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 was that was loved that was lost Right, uh, by by death, you know, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So that is all, you know, mashaAllah, you know, it helps a person not dwell right, in that in and, and be stuck, right, you know, in that situation, but to be able to uh, move on from there. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. I don't write any notes, eh? But I hope people are just following. Now. I know, I'm time to die. No, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> you can write, write your notes, write your notes. MashaAllah. Right, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. Um, okay. So that's, that's that's the beginning of the chapter. Let me just read the chapter first. Uh, so he said there is only one protection from adversities and misfortunes, and that is patience, sabr. Right. So and that already points you to it will fade away, insha Allah. Right. That's what patience is about. Right. It will fade away. Right. These are things that afflict us. Just bear with it. That's it. Just bear with it. And and and, and it's really Allahu alam lah. Eh? That's why I'm saying Allah Alam because this one is my opinion. Whenever I say Allah Alam, my opinion. <laughs> like Allah Alam. Like we're, in, we're in a zaman whereby we don't, we don't have patience when it comes to illness. Like the slightest pain, already we run to a painkiller right, to remove the pain. I like no, no patience you know, on these things. So, like, like you know, if let's say you know, every month as women, we get our menses. Right? And we get, if it's not, it's kind of, if it's excruciating pain. You should get yourself checked, lah. Right? Something that is not right there. And most women, they have, they get, they get, uh, they get, they get their menstrual cramps. For most women, right? Sit through it, sleep through it, bear with it, and then it goes off, right? And from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that nothing afflicts a believer except that his sins are forgiven, and right? not even a thorn that pricks into your skin, right? That your sins are forgiven. Right, but patience, patience. You know, mashallah, patience, patience. Right, and what is patience? It is to embrace what has come your way, right, and to not complain about it to, to, to those who are around you. You can seek solution. Seeking solution is not that does not contradict patience. Seeking solution is basically seeking the the ni'ma and the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Right? Uh, I think you're saying, but you just spoke about <laughs> against uh, painkillers. Eh? Painkillers are not solutions. Painkillers are basically um, painkillers. That's what they are. They kill the pain. Right? They don't they don't so, they don't they don't um, they don't heal the problem, right? They're painkillers. They, they, and it could be even detrimental. Right, if 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 you have a pain in in some place and then you stop the pain there, but the problem is still there, right? And 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 like and the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created our bodies, that if you're in, in if you're in um, the first few days of menses, you know, menstrual cramps, right, your your womb is being stressed, right, because of it having to lose all that to 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 to, to expel that blood. Right, from your womb, you are being stressed, and so your your body is is pushing you to sit. Or to lie down, right? Or to sleep, and your body, in a sense, is forcing you right, into a position because the body wants to rest, right? They don't. The body does not want you to go out there, you know, and and stress yourself, and strain yourself, because the body just went through a lot of, um, uh, is is the body is going through stress, right? So the last thing the body needs is for you to ignore the body and to carry on. Uh, doing what you you know what what you want to do as if the the womb is not being stressed, and then, then thereafter when you have all, all all kinds of issues for our menses and everything, uh, it's because we're not listening to our body. Same thing with headaches. When you have a headache, your body is telling you you're not okay. Right? So it's giving you this this pounding you know uh, pain in your head. It's either you know you're having lack of water, lack of rest, something is going on. Lie down or drink water or do something. The body is informing you. But when you take painkillers, you're just basically muting your body, right? But is the pain, is the problem still there? Still there, right? It's still there. It's not a solution, right? In fact, you might even be stressing the body out even more. And I know it's all my opinion, right? But, and people have their own opinions. I'm not saying haram, eh? <laughs> don't say that. I'm saying it's haram, right? But I'm I'm just saying that um, you know, think about it, think about it. Seeking solution means seeking uh, cure, right? Seeking cure. 
So look for cure. Allahu alam. And, and, and son, I'm not. I mean, if, if you differ, if you differ with me, it's okay. And, and I don't want to go into a, an argument about this. <laughs> I have my opinion, and people are okay to. It's okay if anyone wants to disagree. It's up to you. Alhamdulillah. All right. Um, but what was what we're talking about is basically patience. And the scholars, I mean, I mean, the righteous of the past, right? They, when they are afflicted by certain things, whereby it's just part of life. So that, for example, for us, you know, menstrual camps. Right, basically, just bear with it until it, 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 it runs its cycle. And you know it runs its cycle, right, the menstrual cramps, right? It's basically a cycle anyway. Right? So it has to run the course, right? So the, 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 the womb will have the pain, so you bear with it, patience. You have patience. It happens every month, yeah, have patience. It's okay. You don't have to cry every month. You don't have to complain every month. Honest. <laughs> right. Go through it. Okay. That's it. Dala. <laughs> what else is there to say? Can you want to stop it from happening? Just embrace it, and then, and you know it's a matter of hours, and it's it's done. This is what the body is saying. It's a matter of hours. Okay, it's a few hours. Just bear with this, and then I'm done. <laughs> and then uh, the, the womb is telling you, so have patience and a sabr. And the same thing, same thing also when it comes to other forms. It's not calamity, and it's really it's a, a, a monthly cycle. Right? But uh, but calamities, uh, we know everybody dies. Right. I mean, I know, I know it sounds very cool saying that, right? but people die. That's what people do, <laughs> right? Human beings, is that the creation dies. The creation comes to an end. Everybody dies. We all work, right? we'll have, there will come a time where all of us will face our death. Right? So, you know, it's a matter of time right? where, when you say goodbye to people. Right? So, and it runs its course. Right? You, the, the initial pain, right? and then it moves into, um, you know, into, into, a, into a, a faint memory. Right, and then every now and then you visit that memory, right, and then to, to and and it should serve to help you, right, as you go through life until you wait for your time, right, and you and, and you leave this dunya. And right? so sabr is about sabr is just telling yourself it will run its course, and it will be okay after that. That's it. Then the is sabr, right, sabr on this. Right? So so that you know um you know uh, uh going through. Any any calamity, in fact, I can think of other calamities. I keep talking about death, eh? <laughs> right? right. Uh, any any calamity. If right? you're going to go through a form of slander, it runs its course. After a while, it fades away. So dunya does, right? Ni'ma and musiba, they have a course to run, right? They come and then they fade away, and they come and they go, and they come and they go, and they come and they go, and all that you are that is left behind is how you responded to it. Right. Do you respond with sabr, with patience? Do you respond with, 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 with calmness? Do you respond with forever, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree? And how do you respond? Do you respond with shukr right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's basically what it is. Right, but the tests come and go. Right, but the response is the one that is recorded right, by the angels, what you did with this. Alhamdulillah. Right, so, it, um, so he says here, you must therefore practice patience in all situations. That is for two reasons. Right? So the first one, right, patience uh, in all situations, and that is for two reasons. The first one, the achievement of worshipful service. And that was the whole point of this book. And the whole book is written to teach us how do we be true slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The accomplishment of its purpose. The whole business of worshipful service is founded on patience and endurance of adversities. Right? So if someone, who, if someone is not patient, he will not achieve any part of it in reality. We are human beings, we are not angels. Right? So patience, I mentioned that there are four types of patience. Eh? Right, so there's one on the one that we are talking about here specifically is on mis, uh, misfortune, right, on on uh, on musibah. There is patience against ma'asiyat. Right, so like for example, a person who uh, has very strong desires, so patience until she gets married, for example. Or again, if you're fasting, right, so really want to eat, you know, strong nafsu for makan, <laughs> makan je. Right, so patience on the fast. Right? Patience on the fast until you can break the fast. Right? Or a person who loves to sleep. Right? Patience, um, patience against her sleepiness to pray Isha. Because we're talking about maksiat, kan? Right? To, and to not fall into maksiat, to not fall into sin. Right? So to force herself to have patience, right? to not uh, sleep before Isha. If you know you're going to miss Isha, 
if you sleep before Isha, if someone knows that for sure, if I sleep now, you know, confirm wake up by seven o'clock. Isha and subuh guan, right? So, so patience, right? To, to force yourself, pray the four rakats, and then you can go and uh, you can can go and sleep if you want. Then I will kiss four. It's only four rakats. Only four rakats. Ne khalil pun ada. He was like, How, what time is Isha? <laughs> it's later. It's later. It's like 8.30. So long. <laughs> he wants to sleep. <laughs> what time, Isha? 8.30. Alhamdulillah, Singapore. Alhamdulillah. You're not, you know, somewhere in the North Pole or yeah. in Sweden or something where Isha is all... They didn't go into Isha. The, the sky barely <laughs> covers Maghrib. You know, mashallah. And then the sun will rise again. And I was in Sweden once. The sun, the sun doesn't, you know, it just goes below the horizon and it whoop, goes up. <laughs> and so it never goes into an isha sky. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. So, it, um, so patience against sin. Right? I mean, I'm keeping away from sin. Right. So, like, if someone has uh, a desire for, you know, uh, uh, to to have things, then they just they just basically tahan. Right? So, this 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 form of patience, uh, the Malay word will be will be tahan. <laughs> tahan yourself. Right? So you abstain. Now you stop yourself. From stealing, you stop yourself from backbiting. If someone is so riled up, so angry against the person, right? It's patience to keep your mouth shut and not to go around and just you know let out, let out your steam on everybody around you about so and so. There's masian riba, there's riba, and not having patience with, with with being so you know upset by a person. Because right, you know that they're letting out that steam. This is what people say. You know, whatever you have to let it out. That is called not having patience. You see that? Right. Have patience. Hold it. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you really need a solution. <laughs> you know, because people don't give, people, you know, might or might not give solutions. They might or might not. Right. To let it out with Allah ta'ala is okay. As much as you want? As in to, to just, like how you would do to another human being. Like Allah knows everything, yeah? You can complain as much as you want to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not complain. I mean, ask Allah. Dua. Dua. Right? So, okay, to, to complain, 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 complain. Yeah. Right? Of like course, it's not, it's not dosa to say. Right? It's not dosa. But it's not um, virtuous. It's not a virtuous thing to do. Because you don't, basically, you don't rebel with the decree. Not, what's it no rebel? It could be rebel. Right? But just suka complain. Lah. Complain, 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 complain. You might have rebel with your decree. Right, but it's 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 not virtuous. It's not the traits of the righteous, right? and we know this from the story of Nabi Ayub, alaihi salam. Uh, Nabi Ayub, alaihi salam. Right, when when Allah boasted, you know, to the angels about Nabi Ayub being being completely patient, right, and then Shaitan said, "I will afflict him with every affliction, and you will see whether or not he is really, you know, of your servants who are patient." And Shaitan caused for his all his children to die, right? And then afflicted him with disease and loss of wealth and loss of you know uh, uh, all kinds of loss. Every possible loss that could happen to a person, Nabi Ayub was afflicted. Right? Not a word to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No complaint at all to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And as his patient is full rida, whatever happened to him until the the, the, the illness afflicted his heart. And he realized it was affecting his zikr. So it was affecting his ibadah. And so then he just said to Allah, I have been touched by something displeasing. And but he went through every every calamity you, know, you could think of. He went through. Shaitan you know, really unleashed you know, all of what he could do on Nabi Ayyub. And but when, when eventually all that he said in the Quran, Allah, Allah, Allah quotes him, that I have been touched by, by something displeasing. <laughs> and and that was because his heart was being affected by the uh, the disease. It had, it had come to his heart, and it was eating his heart. And then Allah um, cured him of a complete cure. Subhanahu wa taala. Right. So of course to complain. Okay. See, to complain to people, dosa, dosa. If you are um, is sinful. If you are backbiting, right. Uh, if you're seeking, if you're gonna complain, seek solution. And uh, and and keep the identity of if it, if it involves someone else. Then keep the identity of the person secret as far as you can, right? Um, if you are looking for a cure from a doctor, then it's okay. There's no complaint, right? If they said, and we know, you know, those, if you have kids, you know what is the complaint and what's what is information, right? So you said the pain is here, 
right? I just I can't move my knees, for example. You know, I'm unable to do this. You know, or this is the issue that she, she that he or she keeps this person that, that that I know keeps doing this over and over again. I right? I don't know how to handle it. I right? do you have any solution? You know, or that kind that kind of thing, right? A complaint is whiny. <laughs> Right, you know, a complaint is over and over again, and 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 people keep giving solutions, and the solutions keep getting rejected. Now you know for sure there's a complaint. Right, all this one to do is complain. The one solution, this one to just uh, complain only. What's the what's the benefit? What's the benefit? You see, the people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they look for they look for benefit. What is the benefit? Right, so you keep talking about something. Are you looking for a solution or not? Right, if you want a solution, okay, there's a solution. Follow it. Right, then in in a week or two weeks, come and check with me. Uh, is it getting better? Right, but if you're not looking for a solution, just looking to talk about you know whatever's going on and complaining about things, then you're wasting your time and my time. <laughs> right, you're wasting. And even worse, if you if you if you're causing for both of us to be backbiting, so you were engaged in eating the the, the dead flesh of our own brother, our own sister. Right, even worse, we're both you know uh, throwing ourselves into the hellfire, right, or or into sin. Right, I mean, subhanallah, think about it. Right, so basically, practical, you know, practical approach in life. If you really, I mean, if it's really, of course, in, in complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the pain, right, and that's why Imam, Imam, uh, Imam, Imam Al Haddad, right, in Qal Kafani, right, I mean, Allah knows, it's enough for me, Allah knows my situation. He know, I don't have to tell Allah. You know how bad it hurts. Or I would tell Allah how I'm disappointed I am. You can, you can do so. You know if it helps you, um, uh, if it helps you manage your own emotions. And I'm not saying it's wrong. And eh? no, don't, 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 don't say, don't think that I'm, I'm blaming any of these things. I'm not saying it's wrong, right? Um, but it's at all levels that people go through, right? That they go through. So some of them they just, you know, it, different levels, right? And if you want to complain to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you know, complain to Allah. About your lack of ibadah, your lack of khushu', your lack of tahajjud. Complain to Allah about the knowledge that you have that you don't act on. Complain to Allah about yourself, lah. Complain. If you really want to complain, complain, right? And then think to yourself, you know, where, where am I? Where am I do? Where am I going? Where am I headed in this dunya? And then, you know, mashallah. Right? But if you want to complain about other people, you may in asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to send guidance. They send guidance to so and so. You know, many of the of the ulama, when they were oppressed, they follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When they are oppressed, you see, and you see our perfect exa- example sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right at, at Taif. Ya Allah, I complain to you of myself, right? The dua. Ya Allah, I complain to you. I complain to you of those people in Taif. What's wrong with them? Like, I just go to that one. They trust at me. Like, I mean, he didn't say any of that. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is all dalil. That is from where? From the sira. So if anybody would say, you know, how can you say it's wrong to complain about other people? I'm not saying it's wrong. But the most virtuous thing, which is the practice of our Prophet ﷺ, is that he never complained about people. Right? He only dua for them. And that is the way of every righteous, you know, imam and, and of, of, of the mashayikh, you know, of the, of, of the people that come thereafter, the sahabiyah, the sahaba, all of them have the same practice following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They don't complain about people, right? They complain about themselves. Right? They think to themselves, maybe I am the one who is unable to talk to people. Maybe I am the one who is unable to understand them. Maybe I am. Is that some such thing? You know, I complain to you of, of of my loneliness in the eyes of people. They see me as a nobody, and that's why they they, they they chase him out, saying to him that you are a nobody from Mecca. Who are you to come and say you are a prophet? Right? And then he complained about about and about how few followers he had. Yes, you know, and that people don't see, don't, don't place value in him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he is the greatest of Allah's creations, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You don't you don't hear a word from his mouth complaining about the people of Taif at all. Right? So people thereafter, you know, like you know, you know, watch Imam Ahmad. Eh? Imam Ahmad, you know, when when they whipped him, they whipped him because he refused to say that the Quran is uh, a cre- is is created. Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Azali, uh, there is no beginning, no end of the Quran. Right when after they whipped him to to a point where my actually I showed Khalil, and I closed his eyes. <laughs> right? I was like, "Are you scared?" He didn't want to see the whipping because of the blood. No blood. I mean, he's acting lah. He's acting, but 
But mashallah, he was like so scared. Once he don't want to see, <laughs> right? So anyway, uh, but now I want to see. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, what he he so, so like 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 they 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 said to the Imam Imam doa against them. It's how the Sahaba did with Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, doa against the Quraysh. What they're doing to the Muslim, right? And to the Muslim, and Rasulullah basically said, "Any doa, Allah guide them. Yeah, Allah guide them. Right, guide their children. Right, guide. Subhanallah." And same thing with the, with the imams, with the mashayikh, with the righteous people. Dua for the people, the best for them, and complaints about yourself. That is, that is on the on the on the high end of virtue, lah, mashallah. <laughs> when you speak about, uh, when you speak about uh, virtue, right? but of course, you know, it's human beings. Eh, if you need to, then Allah, right? If you need to let it out, then to Allah, right? Don't go down to the point of sin. Right, where you do it onto uh, with other human beings, right, so you make yourself sinful and you make them sinful. Then both of you are sinful, and there is no benefit uh, from there. Alhamdulillah. Okay, this is this entire section, mashallah. We should make it into. You see, mashallah. Every section in 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 minhaj is a book in itself. Eh? <laughs> every every section. In minhaj, not even every chapter, though. Every subsection becomes a book in itself. Helps you get through life, inshallah, and gives you focus on what is uh, important. Let me see if there's any commentary here. Can we actually publicize our calamities in social medias and complain about it and writing du'a in the post? Okay, the thing about it is that wasn't yet. Okay, if you publicize, and and of course I will answer. A, a, Quick answer, of course, no. Right, the answer is no. That you're not supposed to, because what's the, what is the niyat? Right, what is the niyat in doing that? Right, especially if it's going to involve people that uh, people can will know who they are. Right, so if you say you speak about, I think someone speaks about on online and says, "Oh, my father," or "My mother," or you know, and people can easily find out who's your father and who's your mother. It's not a secret right, who they are. <laughs> Right, so and then they post the riba, and and you know it's uh, how Imam Muhammad says, "My Lord's knowledge about me is enough for me. It should be enough for you. Your Lord's knowledge about you." No, Mashallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Um, yeah. So not to uh, to publicize everything online. Allah, you know, Allah knows best, right? But but I think dua dua is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, kan? So like, you wonder again, like why why must you put a dua online for everybody to? If you want people to dua for you, then just basically anyone who's you know around is it dua that Allah uh, gives me taufiq and hidayah, the dua for the afa wal afia, right? General duas, like all of these things, and dua that Allah gives me a way out for whatever that is uh, dua that whatever that's pulling me away from Him. Uh, Mashallah. Yeah, they just just make people. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay, so I hope I answered that question. Eh, right. So to publicize our calamities in social media and complaining about it, it's more uh, stay away lah, avoid it because unless you have a very very righteous intention about it, yeah. but uh, I would say stay away from it. And then dua to Allah, ask for dua for you as a general dua of goodness for all goodness. Yeah. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا المنافع وعملا خاصا مقبولا وستعني مدلالا عن هدى ويسر به قبل النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معالمنا ومشيخنا وزوي الحقوق علينا وإلى حضر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد